Andy, you ready? Cindy, you good? I'd like to call, call to order the East Hemfield Township um, Traffic Commission. Uh, would you please join me and rise for a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance? And now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first order of business, do we have a motion or First of all, did everybody get a chance to review the minutes and are, are we okay with the minutes as they are? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is there a motion uh, to approve the minutes from 12 21 22? Not sure if I was at that meeting. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so moved. All right. Motion by Mr. Beaver. Is there a second by the chair? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. I actually was at Three to zero. <laughs> okay. Uh, traffic report. Any questions or concerns on the traffic report as presented? No. Do I saw we have uh, contact with um, motorists, and I think that's good. I've seen, driving around, I've seen police cars here and there, which I think does, you know, visibility is good. definitely a help. Good, I did. So, I'm glad to see that. Chief, anything you wanna highlight? Um, just, we gave some pretty good attention to three roadways that have been reoccurring, roadways of concern at uh, traffic commission meetings um, over the last month, month and a half since we didn't have a, the meeting was canceled in January. So that's kind of the recap of the last month, month and a half of uh, efforts that that we gave, particularly the Stony Battery, Spring Valley and Centerville Road. Um, we're trying something new this, uh, this year, which hopefully will enable us to provide back to you at one of these meetings, the exact number of logged activities as well as hours of time that was spent at these locations, um, which is a combination of visibility and enforcement, whether it's just uh, doing some paperwork in some of these locations to, to slow motorists down by visibility or if it's um, some type of actual active enforcement. So um, I would say over the next few months here, we'll see how that goes with uh, me being able to, to tally the exact number of activities and hours of time. I think that provides a nice uh, articulable uh, detailed effort that was given. Good thing. I like that. Yeah. Ms. White, is there anything? Okay. Old business, um, the truck truck route study, uh, I guess this the first meeting of public works group uh, met to review the initial data information. And it looks like there'll be a meeting with West Hempfield coming up. Uh, in regards to that, and then at some point um, after that, I'm guessing we'll get it uh, to the traffic commission. So, um, any questions on that from the board members? Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions from the audience on that? Okay. New business, um, Stanley Porter. Okay. So I uh, understand, Mr. Porter, you have some concerns uh, about the Centerville Road access. Did you want to come up and? Thank you. Um, I live uh, in Getz's Woods. And so my concern um, with the traffic um, and I have to compliment the chief on the changes which we've noticed in terms of um, uh, the trucks and excessive speeds being diminished with um, the policing. Uh, but there still is a fair number of people coming across 
into a cross center of a road to access the school zones. Uh, they're right there at uh, Knowlton Nisley. Um, I'm sorry, not Knowlton Nisley. They're uh, right um, across from the school where the uh, break is for the um, Turkey Hill. And that's a dangerous area for the kids. Uh, there's a real liability for the kids. And I think that since we've articulated the potential problem, there's a potential liability for the community, um, for, the, for you as community leaders, for people going ahead and saying it's not being appropriately policed uh, and it's not being appropriately signed, uh, signage is not up to protect the children and other people going to school. So I think it makes a great deal of sense to go ahead and look into putting a zebra and a pedestrian uh, crosswalk with flashing lights to alert ongoing traffic of that area. There is no place reasonable for children to cross other than at that crossroad. It's a flat area, easy visibility, uh, signage and lights would demonstrate very well to uh, people coming down that road that there are children and other people at risk. So my proposal is to go ahead and have zebra put in with appropriate um, flashing lights, a pedestrian control uh, initiation of that. Have you um, had any discussions with the school district at, at all on this? I've not had discussions with the school district, but we can certainly get the PTA and other people involved to go ahead and indicate their concern for the safety of their children, which I wouldn't think we need to do, but I would think that you would do that as leaders of the community on your own. So I think from, from my perspective, I, I would really, you know, there needs to be, definitely needs to be discussion before we would do anything with the school district itself. Um, I think first, the first order of business is I understand what you're saying and what you see and what you observe. I think for us, the first question that needs to be asked is, does the school district want what it is that you want? Um, and we need to make sure that we're aligned with that. Um, if we do create pedestrian walkways, is that something that they want? Do they want to encourage children to walk across Centerville Road, yes or no? And I'm not saying they do or they don't, but regardless, I think that needs to be where this discussion starts. You know, what is it exactly that the school district is looking for? I think we would be more than happy to cooperate uh, with them and facilitate whatever improvements that they need at that location, if they need some. Um, but to my knowledge, we've never heard that, that there was an issue with this um, from the school district itself. Well, in, in response, uh, I think that we all wish as parents uh, and as school administrators that children always listen to what we say and recommend that they do. The question of whether or not the children are going to listen and are going to use that walkway in a way which is safest for them, I think is unrealistic with their real actions. And to go ahead and to subvert our decision to a school saying, oh, we want a crossroad there because we want kids to walk to school is I think avoiding the real issue, which is the kids are already and other people are already using that as a walkway to go to the stores and to access off school activity. So as much as the school district may have a policy that they wish people to be brought to school by buses or in other ways, the property is being utilized in as a recreational facility and for other reasons which are uh, not necessarily during school hours or before or after school, I'm sorry, or related to school activity. It's a public property which people are using um, for sports and recreation. Uh, you have people using, uh, using it for baseball, it's being used for um, uh, rugby. You know, you have all these other activities which are using the public facility uh, outside of the purview of the, of the uh, educational um, responsibility of the community. 
So I, I would just add to you, or just put this back to you, Mr. Porter. Do you understand the predicament we, we we could find ourselves in if we just acted on what you want us to do right now? We could be in complete opposition of what the school district is actually looking for or wants. And what I'm saying to you is, let's not end up there. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. You, you just said at the school, and I don't know, I don't know exactly what their policy is. It bears looking into. Um, but if what you said is correct, that they don't want kids walking to school, well, then my assumption is they may not want us putting in a walkway that makes it easier for kids to walk to school. Um, so I think we all need to be on the same page there, and there's nothing wrong with coordination, and we're not like trying to subvert you or uh, distance ourselves from this, but you know, I think the school district is um, a huge component in this issue, and they most certainly need to be on board with whatever it is that we're going to do. So let me understand. You're saying that if indeed the Parent Teachers Association feels that it is in the best interest for the safety of their children to go ahead and have a crosswalk or some other controlled area that you feel that's something which would be fully supported by yourself external to the school system? So I did not say that. I said the school district. So the Parent Teachers Association typically works with the district, and it would be my preference that if that's the case, if they if they do take that position, that they would take it with the school and the school staff would work directly with our staff to see that something happens there and, and coordinate exactly what that something is. And if there's going to be something where it's going to be and what they would like to see. I would so like trying, just trying to move this forward. I'm sorry, sir. I would like some clarification, please, on something you said. <clears throat> I heard a pathway to the Turkey Hill. Is that Nisley Road or is there some other pathway down across the embankment to get to Turkey Hill? <clears throat> uh, there's, if you take a look at the site itself, uh, you can go, there are some stairs which go from the top, um, from the top deck to the bottom deck. So it's possible to go ahead and go that way. You can go down around and stay off of the street. You would have to cross over. The, uh, you'd have to cross over, but uh, you can go down. You don't have to walk along the street. I'm trying to envision how this would occur. I'm envisioning the fencing that isolates the ball fields a bit from Centerville Road. And so the students apparently would have to be on the outside of that to get to some point to go toward Nisley Road. And I'm trying to locate where you would think the, the crosswalk would be if in fact one were to be installed. Okay, so the crossword, it, let me answer that in two, uh, two ways. Um, there is already a break in the fence there. It's already created in the mid portion of that field, realizing the children and people do go outside of the boundaries of the fence. There is the boundary of the fence where buses turn into the middle school. Okay, it would be right across from that um, towards uh, Nisley Road that I'm envisioning the zebra and the crossing. So it'd be right over that area. Um, okay. okay. I just have, if you're done, Mr. Lefevre. Did you have any more questions? No, no, thank you. Okay, I was just, this is probably going to be a stupid question, but is that part township road or PennDOT road? Or Centerville, uh, road? Centerville is a, a township road, to my understanding, not a, not a PennDOT road. Township. Okay. The other thing is, I know over at the high school, across Kaufman Road, which is a public road, you got the school buildings on one side, you got athletic fields on the other. So by definition, the kids do have to cross Kaufman Road get the playing fields and there are painted crosswalks there. I can also see this school district saying there's really no, the kids have no business crossing Centerville Road up there to go to the Turkey Hill because we don't want them doing that. And if we put a, if we allow a crosswalk that appears to give our blessing to that, which we don't do. So they may be okay with it, but again, I can see the possibility that they're not because it's 
a different situation than we have at the high school. I do want to see the kids be safe. I know they're going to do what they are going to do. But again, I think Mr. Wigglesworth is correct that we should at least talk to the school district and and it could be a liability issue for them if they allow that to happen. Can I respond to that? I'm sorry. Can I respond to your remark? That's all I had. Um, two things. Uh, we're already looking at a, a wonderful development of the soccer field or the turf field. If you go ahead and take a look at that, that's adjacent. Let, let to me let, let, let's just stop there because I, I really want to correct this from from now on. Every time this gets mentioned, because. Uh, I'm getting really frustrated with this. There is a concept plan for that piece of property. There is nothing in place. We have not given the tenant who's the sod farmer notice. Um, there may be a couple ball fields there in a few years, but the concept plan is 20, 30 years in the making. It, there's not going to be a developed park there probably in my lifetime. So, but well, I hope you live long. <laughs> and, yes, and, me too. And, I would love to see it. But my my point was really was in future thinking. Um, you have the, you have the Hemfield Garden, the right there. You have the, um, golf course, uh, which is there. People access that area, and so what I'm saying is, even though our children may not list to our every word, and we may not wish them to do certain things. Reality is they act and other people act in ways which we don't want. We see that all the time. That's why we need a police force, you know, not for our children, but because people act in ways which are counter to public, public safety and their own safety. So what I'm saying is I think that we have a obligation to put the safety of these people primost, even if it may be sometimes be against what we feel is the our best judgment. So I, I think we've all heard you, Mr. Porter. I, we totally understand where you're at. And I think, you know, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think our response back to you is really need to start at the school district. If you can get the school district on board and that's what they want, they'll come to us. We'll have our traffic engineers take a look at it, you know, and we'll go from there. Where Where would it best be located? Where does the school district want it? Um, and we can get it moving. But I really do think this needs to initiate with the school district and the request is gonna have to come from them um, before we're gonna take some action on this. Do you put any, um, is there any influence which the different teams who utilize the fields uh, would have on your opinion? For us, I think it's gonna be the school district. And I, I really think that's where you need to start is the school district administration. Um, and maybe the PTA can be an ally with that. But I think if you get the administration on board speaking to us, um, that's going to make it happen. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we don't have anything else on the agenda. Are there any public comments for the Traffic Commission? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Okay. You could give your name and address. Uh, my name is Cindy Roberts, and I live at 986 Nisley Road at the corner of uh, Nisley and Randy Road, down from Turkey Hill. Okay. Yep. I've been there for over 20 years. That road is being traveled at rates of speed that I can tell you is well above 25. There are kids that do walk from the school. I see them get off the school bus because I'm there all day. They do walk down that road. And not only is it the school kids, it's pedestrians, okay? Um, the traffic that comes going toward the school, they, they don't even stop at that intersection at times. They go straight through. I have seen them turn left where there's a, a sign right there that says, do not turn left, no left turn. They will turn left, and I, and I see it all the time. It's not just once in a while, but I see it a lot. And I have already, um, I, I I've already called and, and you know, talked to someone you know here at the uh, community building, 
And I have, I've had concerns. I've lived there all this time. And, and even the trucks, there's trucks, there's, um, I even asked if it was possible if they could put like speed bumps in because of the speeding that goes on that road. I've seen them, they, they've done it in Lancaster and they have it in other roads around the county, not necessarily in our township, but surrounding areas. And um, because one of these days, I don't wanna witness it, but I'm telling you it's gonna happen. I mean, I've seen trucks come down there so fast that when they go around that curve going up toward Turkey Hill, they have to get over the line because the top of their trucks start to sway to the right. That's, that's to me is really, really bad. And I had called because I have a list um, when that construction started of how many dump trucks piled high with dirt have come through there back and forth, February 6th, February 7th, February 8th. And finally it, it, it died down. Okay, I haven't seen any, um, I've seen one today going towards Centerville School, but it seems like, and I see the signs that you guys put up there, no, you know, truck throughway or whatever, they're all diverting down our way. And so it's, it's bringing it into Nisley, and I'm telling you, they're, they're speeding up there, they're not stopping at that intersection. I can see where he's concerned where the kids are crossing because they don't listen. They do walk home from the school. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't you know, doubt that. No, yeah. I don't, I don't so doubt that. My, my concern, and I know you guys already know about the speeding problem. I do know you know that. But at, at some point, we, we have to do something about it because someone's going to die. Mm. I mean, I just, and I don't, I don't want to be the one called 911. Sure. Uh, I just don't. So have we, have we studied Nisley Road in that area ever? Yes, we did uh, two. Uh, speed studies in 2022. Okay. And what were they? What were the results? Sure. So I have them up here. Um, we did both in June and July of last year. Um, actually, my document is a little goofy. Sorry, I have some formatting issues. Um, my memory serves me correct. Again, I'm having some issues with the document. Um, we definitely um, were aware and did some enforcement after those speed studies that the speeds are are something of which we need to give some attention to. Okay. They weren't extreme. They weren't extreme, they but were they they were thirties possibly. Um, definitely not twenty. I think higher than yeah. that. I've seen already. Yeah. I'm sorry. Of can, course, there are always outliers. Give me one second. The average speed, I'll I think, was like try and get seven. My document okay. figured out here. With Mrs. Roberts, when you mentioned an intersection, were you talking about Nisley and Centerville, or uh, yes, when you go up the hill? Okay, I think Turkey Hill there. I think or, that's a yield, not a. Stop. It is. Yes, you're right. It is. A yield. So they wouldn't stop. So they wouldn't stop, but right. it they uh they don't pay attention to anything. They just go. I mean, if they'll go out and they'll try to beat the next car coming down you know, coming this way. And I can tell you yeah. because when I go down that road to come to my home, I back in because I'm afraid to back out of my road. So when I back in, when I'm coming down that road, I can look in my rear view mirror and I see nothing. By the time I get to my driveway and put my reverse lights on, they are right behind me honking their horn because I'm backing into my own driveway. I mean, and this happens all the time. And I, you know, I don't, I don't speed on that road because I live there. I know what it's like. So, and then that happens every time because my husband will say, just pull in, just pull in. I said, no, I have a right to back in my driveway. <laughs> I, you know, it's the same thing. If I back out, am I going to get hit? Because there's a, a, a grade up this mm -hmm. way and you can't always see how fast they're coming. And before you know it, they're there at my driveway. I, when, where are the dump trucks coming from? Is that, do they start work on that strip? Development at Malt and Nestle Centerville. So we yeah. investigated. Um, someone suggested that they were coming from the Centerville Road project. Oh, we did okay. investigate that, wow. and their trucks don't come anywhere near that corridor. They're actually headed okay. west, and they use the state okay. roads to travel. Um, the only the other question that was posed was the Stauffer development, which is at the corner of State yeah, Battery and Marietta, and we haven't been able to ascertain from them where the trucks are going. They're intermittent, and the developer has hasn't uh, gotten back to us, but we don't have any obvious um, location for those trucks to be coming from. Um, I also did a, uh, a a search of what was going on there. 
And Hold on, Eugene, Carrie, let me turn you up. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Now try it. I, I also did some checking after I spoke with uh, Cindy a few times. And uh, it, what was going on was UGI was installing a gas line from what would have been down Lawrence down to the uh, Stauffer you know, development that's going on there. And they were replaced or installing a water line the whole way up Lawrence and down Bunny. And then they were coming down to where their dump site was. They were actually using Nisley Road to get down to um, Church Street to continue out that way. I did ask them not to use, you know, that route. And again, they are finished now. So that's um, so that's probably why I don't. See that's them. why I think it stopped. Yes. Um, but I can tell you they were coming from uh, Nolt Road that that way down going towards Centerville with full loads and i mean full loads because i took pictures of mud and stuff that i had from the trucks from it pulling off as they're traveling down this lee at not 25 either <laughs> you know so um but they would be going towards centerville and then they would come back empty so i i don't know where they were coming from but they were coming from from up that way from you know nolt road to centerville so I don't know where those guys were coming from, but I'll tell you what, for three days, it was nonstop. I do have the info for the speed studies then, if you. Okay, sure. So for uh, the June speed study that we did, 85th percentile was 40 miles an hour. We gave it uh, some pretty good efforts with signage and enforcement. That was in June through July. We did another study. Um, the 85th percentile dropped to 37 miles an hour, um, again, in the 25. So I think we've heard you on this, um, you know, for the speeding issue, uh, our department does, you know, what we can. We we don't have the ability to put a police officer 24-7 every, right. But, um, you know, we can pay more attention to it. Yep. And uh, I think the chief's got it and, um, you know, take a look at it here in the future as well. So, all right. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Yeah. Yes. Is there any other public comment for the traffic commission? I think I'm at the right meeting here. Uh, I'm Tom Miller. I live on Harrisburg Pike, right up by the hospital on okay. Centerville Road. Uh, I know when the hospital and all our project was uh, going on, I had talked to uh, Perry. I talked to him uh, about some concerns more than once. And he mentioned about, oh, well, we got these great new radar traffic lights that uh, are going to be really nice. And I don't know how they're supposed to work. I don't know if it's, oh, well, we see a car, we notice a car half a mile down the road. So we're going to stay green. And where I'm going with that is I can sit there at the light facing Lancaster on Harrisburg Pike. I can look the whole way left, not see one car on uh, as far as Yellow Goose Road and beyond. Nothing's coming down Centerville Road, but for some reason we're sitting there for two minutes at a time waiting for that light to change when there's no traffic going on. And that's part of traffic control is to have lights working properly that traffic can, doesn't have to back up because I've already seen it sitting in my driveway waiting to pull out and traffic's backed up the whole way, almost the whole way down to Bowman Road from Centerville Road. And for some reason, we're sitting there and no traffic's coming from Centerville Road, State Road, whatever. So I don't know if, and Perry says, well, that's a PennDOT thing. Well, is PennDOT being called to come out and look at that? And did they even look at it after it was installed? You would think they would, uh, let's check this out. And you, they don't have to put strips on the road. You can spend five, 10 minutes sitting there watching traffic and you're gonna, you don't need strips to tell you that, hey, something ain't right here. Then I proceed, I work at Women and Babies, one of my one job, between 6.15, 20 after, you get down at the light at Woodcrest Villa and the campus, nobody's coming in or out, but for some reason that light goes red. And then you sit there for another two minutes and nobody's in the left-hand turn lane and then the left-hand turn lights are going on and nobody's sitting there. So I don't know why, and then uh, for some reason, it seems to be longer, 
than when there is traffic there, but it sits, I mean, it stays uh, left hand. I mean, I sit there for a couple minutes sometimes when it's red and there's no traffic coming across. Now, that's what I said, lights, I read this article before and I don't want to forget what the, what the figure was, but it was like millions or billions of gallons of gas or whatever is going into the atmosphere and you're wasting it uh, just sitting at traffic lights. And part of traffic control is if we had the lights actually working properly, you could maintain the traffic flow. When I'm coming home and I'm sitting at the light from the campus to come out, when that light turns red and Harrisburg Pike traffic stops, you would think up here at Centerville Road, that traffic would be moving at that point because there's nothing between Woodcrest, that traffic light at Woodcrest and the campus and Centerville Road. But what's it do? It waits till I get right on top of the light and then it decides, oh, it's time to change now. But my thing is with the radar lights, if they're, they're supposed to be so fantastic is why are we sitting so long and there's nothing, I can, like I said, I can see the whole way past Yellow Goose Road and nothing's coming, but we're still sitting there. So. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't catch your, your name the first time. Tom Miller. Tom Miller, okay. Um, Perry, are you still there? Yes, uh, and I can tell you there is a known problem at the campus that we are working with PennDOT right now to try to resolve that. Um, that is part of that um, system that goes the whole way through Lancaster City. And the micro pro the processor for that unit is actually out and we have it out for repair. Uh, so we know there's a problem there at the health campus and we are trying to resolve that one. Um, as far as up at uh, the Centerville Road one, um, again, we, we did have CM High check all those timings and, and they are right on according to, um, you know, PennDOT's permitting. So uh, at this point, um, you know, every time a car pulls up, they don't automatically change. There is a, there is a time that they, they have to time out before it will actually switch lanes. But again, we had it checked and it's, it's according to the permit. So I, I don't know, um, you know, you would have to go through a permit change to do any, any uh, change there, but um, that intersection is working as per PennDOT specs. Okay. I didn't know that was a timing issue because when I heard radar, I thought, okay, it's going to sense where cars are at and the light's going to work accordingly because you're going to have, it's going to be busier at rush hour than it is going to be at six, quarter after six in the morning, like when I leave for work or, and everybody else leaves for, or other people leave for work, it's not going to be as busy. So that's what I thought the, how the radar was working was it's going to sense where cars are and the light will work, work accordingly, not on a timer, but because you get off, the other thing is you'll get off 283 West, where Kelly Cadillac is. Then you turn left and you look, we're going straight through across the overpass, we're continuing through, but the traffic that's sitting, I don't know which way, but sitting across on the other side that's trying to go toward the Turkey Hill, they're sitting there. You know why they're sitting there? because the leading left-hand turn light is on and nobody's in that lane. Why would there be anybody in the lane when you just got off the highway, you're not getting off the highway to get back onto the highway. So there's just little things like that that could help ease the traffic flow if you're not sitting waiting for traffic, I mean, waiting for a light when there's nobody, when a, like a leading left-hand turn light's on and nobody's in that lane. Mm -hmm. So that that's all I was. It's, apparently, I'm confused on how the radar works. I'm just I was just assuming that the radar is going to sense where traffic is and the lights are going to work accordingly, not on a timer per se. Oh well, okay, they're supposed to be running for two minutes, and we're they're going to run for two minutes whether those cars going through the intersection or not, which doesn't make sense to me. So anyway, well, Mr. Miller, if I understand you correctly, the you know, really had two issues. So we found out, right? One at the health campus, there is going to be something that's done about that 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 should improve. Um, but the one, you know, that's at uh, Centerville and Harrisburg Pike, um, that is uh, a PennDOT light, and it is meeting PennDOT specs. 
Um, Maybe the respects need change. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't argue that with you. I think a lot of things need change there, but um, we don't have the power or the authority to do that. But I think we've heard you, Perry or Cindy, do you guys, have we had any other complaints about the lights there? I haven't. All you have to do is sit there and you'll know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you're just sitting there, you look left and you won't see a traffic line, but for some reason, you're still sitting there. That's that's yeah. Great. Unfortunately, radar isn't instantaneous, you know, like like that. It's it's just the method that it's used to pick up that vehicles are there, but there still is a, a countdown timer, you know, for each direction. Um, and, and it it can utilize the radar to even hold traffic for like the turn lanes if it does notice there's a lot more cars in the queue um, but again um, it, it will still it still gives each direction a certain amount of time you know once traffic is noted in the area and perry have you had any other complaints about that intersection harrisburg pike and centerville road uh not not really I, I had one or two in the very beginning about some other issues that were corrected but um, no, nothing lately. I spoke to Tom several times on it. Okay. So, Mr. Miller, I, you know, I kind of hate to pass the buck here, but <laughs> in, um, in this situation with that particular traffic light, we just don't have any authority. Um, and if it's meeting specs, we're just not going to be able to, to change it. So, uh, Perry had said they come and check it twice a year or something. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. if there's something wrong with it now, why aren't they coming out now? and looking at it so that's yeah um i'll just maybe to give give some hope is that intersection has been rebuilt for like what a year or two so it's still kind of new. so i mean there could be a possibility that if there's complaints that the permit could be revised and i'm sure dealing with penned out on that would be a nightmare but and not everybody's going to could happen in a meeting and voice a concern about it so you can't really make I'm any just, promises I'm but pretty much outspoken when it comes to that uh the other thing was i don't know if there was any consideration of putting a traffic light coming out of wise markets hmm. on uh traffic stony battery on. road is that where you're talking about stony battery road there yes okay um not is, to to dump on pen dot but uh to put any kind of signalization into an intersection, you do need PennDOT to approve it. Right. For PennDOT to approve it, they need volume or a concern, <laughs> safety concern. And it's enough as a safety issue because sometimes it's a real pain in the neck to get mm -hmm. out of there and somebody's gonna take a chance to get out of there and probably get plowed. And unfortunately the way PennDOT looks at it is it has to happen first. <laughs> oh also the the wise side of Stony Battery Road is in West Hemfield Township too. So that makes it even oh more difficult <laughs> i usually turn left out of the wise yeah. all the way around <laughs> and loop to uh, the light there yeah. at the rec center which burns extra gas but sometimes that's the uh, a lot of times too, you'll have people that are sitting across so you got to wait for them because they got the right away but sometimes they're coming straight and they could have went across five times but they're sitting there <laughs> and regardless of whether i got there first or they got there first at that point once they're there, they got the right away because they're coming across and I'm turning. So I, I also think you're going to run into an issue on volume on that cross street, too. I just don't think there's going to be enough to warrant a light. I just don't know if it had to be volume or if there was a safety issue. If that's another factor they look at. Well, like Ms. Schweitzer said, the safety issue would be data from accidents that have happened um, that would create a, you know, a need for it. Um, but I just, for sure, the the warrant's not going to be able to be met from the volume coming from Wise. I mean, there's plenty of traffic on Stony Battery Road, um, but the side streets that, you know, don't have as much traffic, that's where you need the volume to be um, to warrant the light. And it's just not there. Even though it's in West Hemfield, that's really going to be the issue. I don't know if this is considered a traffic thing or not. Is there a is the police chief here? She is, yes. Yes, sir. As I told the police chief was going to be here. Is a couple of things that really bother me are people that drive without their lights when it's raining, when I'm on my cycle. I don't got a windshield wiper on my on my windshield. So you're not going to be able to see people as good as when you got you're in a vehicle 
with your wipers going back and forth. Then you got them. Uh, let's see how much, how far into the into the night we can run with our lights on. The other month, not too long ago, it was it wasn't it was way past dusk and borderline dark. Back vehicle is coming up Bowman Road. I didn't see it till the very last second, but you know, luckily he's in the other lane. Where I'm going with that is if I would have been at an intersection and I would have looked right or whatever direction he was coming at and didn't see him and pulled out and I would have got creamed. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I talked to another police officer before is there's so many stupid things that people do that innocent people get hurt with. And what you were saying about the yield sign, yield signs aren't yield signs anymore. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're get out of my way. I'm coming through. That's what they are. And I think we can make so much money for the township going out and getting these idiots off the road, which is why our premiums, why we're paying what they are, and that's why innocent people are getting killed. I was pulling out of the Sunoco one time. Where is the left hand turn to 30? It's down at Dutch Apple Theater, which is down below the Sunoco. Traffic was backed up. Somebody left me through. I pulled out. I looked. I didn't see anything. I went to make a left turn turn. The next thing I know, to go up the hill, the next thing I know, brakes, somebody put their brakes on hard. I almost got creamed by a car starting way up at the giant at that light past the Sunoco to come down to get in the left-hand turn lane that's way down at past the chapel. Well, uh, Mr. Miller, I do appreciate your comments and, um, you know, we've heard them. I think uh, Chief always, um, our officers would always be pulling over people that don't have their lights on when they should, no doubt about it. We just can't put an officer everywhere um, at every intersection, which I think you know oh, yeah. that. So, um, but I think we've heard you about what you had to say on the intersections. And um, um, I think, you know, we're, we're good with that, so. Because I said that before, like just trying to pull out on 283, mm -hmm. you got a yield sign. But if I'm on 283 and coming up the road uh, and going up the road, if I got somebody telling me, how am I supposed to back off to let him out? Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to get in the left-hand lane when somebody's in the passing lane? Understood. And then one other point is- Last one, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Luckily, I was in my truck. I'm going down. I'm going up 283. I was about a mile from the Leandersville exit here, or whatever. And a tread came flying up. The vehicle in front of me hit it and flew up and it hit the front bumper of my truck. What happens if I would have been on my bike and that hit me? From what I was told is retreads were outlawed on front tires of trucks and now they changed it. And now they're allowed on front tires or truck. Uh, how many times? I mean, you, everybody that drives here sees it. Retries laying on the side of the road. And I mean, if I would have been on my bike and that would have flew up and hit me, I might not be here talking to you right now. And you're doing 65 down the highway and a tread comes up and hits you. Like I said, luckily I was in my truck at the time. So I don't know where I go to address that, but. I think you're going to have to start at the top and work your way down. Um, you know, we don't, we are obviously not going to be able to. I just don't know what jurisdiction yeah. that was. You know, if, if the township has any jurisdiction on 30 or 283 at all. For traffic enforcement, yes. In our area, we do. But as far as what the specs are and what's required on tractor trailers, no, we don't. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. From my driving experience coming here tonight, coming south on State Road, approaching Harrisburg Avenue, someone I obviously in a hurry to get home from work cuts right in front of me into my lane. So I go up Centerville Road, dodging potholes and a large doe deer right over in front of me. Then I'm going out of the shopping center up at uh, Giant and they book the intersection because they're in a hurry to get home. So my message is defensive driving. It's the <laughs> only solution. You've got to look out because they're out there. Deers or otherwise, they're about the same mentality. 
So <laughs> you reminded me of one other thing. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Last one. This is the last one. All right. Who is responsible for nothing? Here, well, I wouldn't say nothing irritates me more than that, but I hate playing dodge the sunken manhole cover. <laughs> you hit them with a car, just imagine hitting that with a bike. Mm -hmm. And I had to pay, this is a second bike, I had to pay to have my fork seals replaced at $600 a clip. And it's, from what I understand, is basically from sunken pothole or potholes and sunken manhole covers. And from talking to Perry before, supposedly, those are adjustable. They can be raised back up. If they settle down, they can be brought back up. Right there's a full-time job for somebody to go around and get those back up. Because I know it's really bad on Stony Battery Road to from Marietta Pike to there. It's from Main Street on Church Street. There's a bunch of bad ones that are, are pretty deep too. And you hit one of those and, well, I've already hit it with my truck already going around to bend there where the, on Church Street, right across from where the Vietnamese church is and went around the corner and hit that with my truck <coughs> and it moved my truck off, off some. So I just got to remember that that's there when I'm on the bike. Hmm. So I just yeah. didn't know if there's people available that does that sort of thing or whatever, because. So Perry, and I wanna quickly move on here and give anyone else a chance that wants to speak, speak, but if you're still there, so the manhole covers, I'm assuming township roads, we take care of those. We or, do, we, we, we try to make LASA uh, fit them appropriately. And when we, when we are repaving the streets, we do adjust them. Uh, there are some, um, again, Church Street, uh, that portion of Stony Battery, you know, when they repaved that, that was PennDOT. They don't enforce that as well uh, as I think the township does. But uh, every time, you know, we repave a road, we adjust them so that, you know, they are, uh, you know, you, you can't, you can't ever have not a bump there. You got to have a little bit of a, of a bump because of hitting them with the snow plow. But um I mean, that's that's basically, and it is Lassa's responsibility for those manhole covers, but we try to work with them when we can. Okay. Thank you. It wouldn't be as bad if they were like all here, but this one's here, then that, the next one's over here, and then this one's over here. So it's like, okay, where's the next one at? So you, anyway. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Is there anyone else for the Traffic Commission that has any other comments for, for public? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I just want to say uh, thank you. you I, I live on Nisley Road, and they repaved that just recently, and they put a little bit of curbing in to help the water direct, and it's been a big help. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And anyone else? Do we have anyone on Zoom that wishes to speak? Okay. Okay, then we're going to adjourn the traffic commission meeting. It is 6.50. We will return at seven o'clock for the board of supervisors meeting. Thank you.